Hey, what's up, World Wrestling Live here, another awesome show. I'm here with one of our uh, amazing coaches in the state of Florida, uh, doing really big things on the East Coast here. Uh, he's the head coach at Cocoa Beach. And uh, yes, sir. he's got an amazing club over there, North Brevard. We've been there. Uh, it's very easy to get to right off US-1 in the B line or the beach line now. Um, and uh, it's a cool little place. He's got about 30 kids behind him right now doing their practice. Uh, and it's North Brevard Wrestling Club. Uh, if you know, you know, Coach Chris Kelly. What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for finally coming on, man. This is awesome. Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit uh, way back at Regions when we first met. So it's good to finally get on here and and uh, do this thing. It's amazing. I tell people this sport, the way you come together with somebody, is it's always through battle. Like I, that that match happened. And it was an insane match, and they pushed each other, and, uh, you know, and, and I just, you know, obviously Daniel got the best of that one, and then Billy Day got the best of him. I think it was at Poseidon. But yeah, since the, since the minute that match ended, they, they just – it was like a match made in heaven, man. They just fell in love with each other. They're, they're, they're hanging out. They're practicing. He's coming out to you now. Uh, we became friends. We sat together at the state tournament when I was up there not – not taking photos both yeah. kids ended up making the podium so it was it was really cool to kind of follow that path and uh, man I, I appreciate what you've been doing for my son so thank you absolutely yeah it's awesome the way that they came together I mean you know sometimes other sports you, you don't get along and I mean they battled it out probably one of the closest contested matches I've watched in a long time um, both were completely exhausted afterwards and just became training partners right like two weeks later they're training partners so it's an awesome situation in the sport of wrestling how that can happen yeah i love it man so uh for people if you don't know uh chris is not an original floridian he moved here from illinois uh where his dad has a club up there i believe it's called isi yes yeah isi uh, wrestling isi wrestling up there uh his dad was a head coach at all the levels youth level high school level college level uh, he has a sister that was a badass as well. Uh, she's got some, uh, just a few medals, wrestled in college as well before, you know, when it was just kind of club wrestling, right? I mean, they didn't even really have programs. Yeah, she was lucky enough to initially get on at Northern Michigan where they have that uh, Olympic Education Center where they had women's and Greco. So she started there. Um, so she actually got her degree out of wrestling, which was very rare back then. Um and then trained at several other colleges after that. So, man, so Pretty cool. And then, um, and then you ended up had lots of offers coming out. You ended up your dad was coaching at a small college over there, and just kind of worked out best to just kind of hang out with him and go to college. And uh, pretty cool. What? So, man, talk about that. What was it like to end up? I mean, obviously, your dad's been around the wrestling room the whole time, and now you're going off to college. He takes over this program, and. Uh, and you guys go off and do that was uh, initially, I'm sure you're like, damn, I really wanted to go somewhere. But then once you got there and, and you got through it, would you do it again? I would absolutely do it again. Um, you know, sometimes in the sport of wrestling, you butt heads with your dad. And um, I did early on in my career, we butted heads a lot. Um, I think the break of, I think it was my junior year of high school. He took the um, head coaching job at the college. And so he was kind of, you know, in the distance then, because obviously that's a full time job you know, you're, you're gone all the time. You're recruiting, you're doing things. So I think that space um, kind of gave me the opportunity to see that he was uh, the guy that could really get me to the levels I wanted to get to. So then, you know, it, it took me probably the full two years to realize, all right, I want to wrestle for him. And um, it really probably, probably butted heads again my freshman year. And then from that point forward, it was just an awesome experience. So I definitely do it all over again. Yeah, really, really cool. And then, all right, big question: uh, best wrestler, you or your, you or your sister? Um, I mean, I, I got to give it up to her. Uh, <laughs> she plays in the World Games, and uh, you know, I, I don't have that level of uh, expertise, so I got to give it up to her. So. Have you been able to? Um, <clears throat> have you been able to get her into the room? Get her over here to Coco at all yet? Have her do so some clinics. So she actually. Um, Moved out to Hawaii uh, about five years ago. Um, she doesn't come back often, but actually um, the first week of October is the first time she's flying out here from Hawaii. 
So I'm pretty excited. Uh, uh, I'm guessing, listen, you're in a beautiful area, but I'm guessing you'd rather go there and put on clinics than have her come here and put on clinics? Probably so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, the coolest thing is, is that my daughter's wrestling now, and uh, she's been doing actually really, really well lately. Um, but my sister's become obviously like her idol, you know? Oh, so cool. uh, I'll catch her just sitting in a room watching, you know, videos online of my sister wrestling and she's just in there alone just watching the video so oh man um, so when she comes i'm sure she's gonna roll with your daughter for hours yeah so my daughter is so excited for her to come and she's like you know i just want to i want to spend every moment wrestling with her so it's really <laughs> so cool, cool. cool and uh, you know so okay so chicago we know chicago awesome city um but man you're in Cocoa beach now uh, that's got to be uh, you. You've got to not miss the 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 windy city when you're when you're walking out and you're seeing the in, you're seeing the inlet there. You're seeing the ocean there. What? How did you end up down here? Um. So actually, I I uh, came down here um, on spring break, uh, like my junior year of college, um, and then after my junior year of college, I I'd actually met some friends down here, um, and one of the guys I met um through graham smith who's the coach at Merritt island um because he we actually went to middle school together um before he ended up moving to florida uh but i met one of his friends and he's like hey man i'll give you a place to stay for the summer if you just want to come live in florida for the summer so i moved down here that summer between my junior and senior year and uh just kind of fell in love with the area and the people so when i graduated this is just where i wanted to be and it i kind of lucked out um Fox Baldwin's dad, um, Fox was going into sixth grade. And so his dad was trying to find his wrestling coach, like who was going to be his coach. Um, and so he brought me down here and I coached Fox's sixth grade year. Um, and that's just kind of what got me down here to Florida. That's awesome, man. And, and so, you know, we'll, we'll get into like North Brevard Wrestling Club and let's see, let's see it behind you a little bit. All right. It's out of the way. Yeah, man, there's a club, North Brevard Wrestling Club. That's, that's where he's at right now. And um, you've been there for a while, I know. So, um, so I know initially, well, you're down in Kissimmee, and then you moved out to Coco to open up your club because that's the area you really wanted to be. And you know, for for a good while, you were building a, a really, really, really solid program at Bishop Moore, and um, you were doing really well there. And then uh, opportunities came to to get the school in your backyard. Um, what was that transition like? I know people were, initially they were like, man, I'm really bummed because, you know, you're an awesome coach, awesome dude. And and the transition was difficult finding another coach. Now they have a new coach and he's great and whatever. But um, was it was it hard to make that decision or, or you were ready? Um, so it was, it was honestly really hard to make that decision. Um, I kind of always knew it, you know, in the back of my head that I needed to, to make that move at some point, uh, just from the wife and kids standpoint says, you know, with traffic, having to take I four and stuff, you know, it's taken me an hour and a half to two hours sometimes to get home from practice practice ending at seven o'clock, you know, I'm home and my kids are already in bed. So, um, got to be a really hard situation with that so I kind of knew that at some point I had to do it um obviously Gavin Wheeler was a big factor you know I had coached him since he was in seventh grade um and I really wanted to kind of finish out with him um before it was all said and done I would coached his older brother Jake so I felt like I at least owed it to him to kind of stick around Bishop Moore um and then you know it came time where he was done and it still was almost impossible for me to decide to leave because, you know, you form those bonds, Mason Medina, Elijah D. Um, I mean, you had some hammers. Like I was surprised. I was like, man, he's still got some really good kid. Like it wasn't like you were leaving a bad situation. Right. Right. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, with, you know, we had I think four returning district champs or five between Kate Eisenhut and Mason Medina and Elijah D. And we had a bunch of kids coming back and, um, they were all great kids and it just, it, it was honestly really, really hard to leave. Um, but in the end, um, 
the situation came up where the job opened up at Cocoa Beach when I didn't really expect it to. Um, Kevin Robinson, who had been the head coach there for a long time, he took the athletic director job. Um, and he actually came up here to know Brevard uh, to a couple practices and started talking to me and was like, hey, man, I'm taking the AD job. Would, would Cocoa Beach be something you'd be interested in? Because he knew I lived out here. Um, so pieces kind of fell together. Um, and it, it just kind of had to, you know, I'm, I got to gotta get... say nothing better. The one thing I've learned about being around wrestling in the in the 10 minutes I've been around it is nothing better than having an AD at your school that was a wrestler. Because if you Absolutely. have an AD at your school that was not a wrestler, it's virtually you're virtually hands tied because it's just the hardest thing in the world to get them to help you. And when yeah. you have when you have those ADs that either were wrestling or involved in wrestling or had kids that wrestled. It just, I mean, look at the Bush brothers, right? They got a guy there that's just passionate about wrestling and, and every program around the state that you look at, that's, that's having success. They've got an AD that's bought in, right. And is helping. And they've got a football team that's bought in and is helping. And if you don't have that, it's just really tough, but you Absolutely. know, you transition over to Coco and I mean, your first year there was phenomenal. I mean, I, I saw you had kids, running around the state tournament yeah it was, a, it was a really great year the kids worked really hard um i think you know because of covid and all that and Cocoa beach is a really i think people don't understand that it's a really small school it's like the second smallest public school in in florida uh enrollment wise and so there was only four kids returning for the team so it was really a, a year of getting kids out, trying to get some of the kids that I knew had wrestled before but didn't wrestle because of COVID or whatever the situation was back out. And, um, you know, having an athletic director of support, he was constantly on kids around school and he knows all the athletes. So he was trying to push. So just getting the numbers up and then having some success with a few kids this year was um, amazing. And hopefully we can keep, uh, keep building on it. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, from – that that coach there from I don't know is it is it I think from Palm Bay all the way up to FPC um, on that along the water there along US one man I there's a lot of good wrestling I mean you're just seeing that that area that whole those three counties or whatever they are right there just they're really starting to bring it and you're seeing a lot of good stuff happening out there um, and now with the club your your club is growing. Uh, you got uh, so you start with four kids. Where are you at now? Um, as of right now, um, we're at projected at thirty with the kids that have signed up. Um, obviously, you never hundred percent know in wrestling. I'm hoping that number actually bumps up. But if we do get thirty, I'll take thirty in my second year. Um, you know, after only four returners, I think we finished last year with about fifteen um, at the end of the year, and now bumping up to thirty this year. Um, you know, a lot of uh, the great thing about Cocoa Beach, too, is it's a seven through 12 school. So kids, you know, most schools that are like that are private schools. But with it being a public school, I can still have seventh and eighth graders wrestle. So we've got a lot of middle schoolers coming in. And that's uh, that's probably the most exciting thing for me, because getting to coach a kid for six years instead of four. I mean, I love love the idea of that. So that's awesome. Hey, so. I know I, I was supposed to, Daniel and Zachary and I were supposed to, to go down with you to state champ camp. And then we got back from Fargo and COVID hit the house. And, um, and I was just, you know, they, I think, I think Daniel had already gotten through it at Fargo because I think they all got it there. Um, yeah. But, uh, but I, you know, my wife had it and I, I didn't want to like take a chance of coming there to Duck's room and giving it to people. Right. So really right. bummed we missed it but how was it this year I know you took a you took a squad down there yeah I mean coach duck is awesome um he's I mean obviously one of the best coaches and probably you know one of the best youth coaches too in the state maybe in the country as far as youth is concerned the guy is always producing um so that camp just seems like every single time that he puts it on it gets better somehow right I don't know how but every single year it's like better and better and better <laughs> And you, you think it can't be because it's probably the best camp in Florida to begin with. And then it, you know, it gets better. So, and um, by the way, he just, just just made the Hall of Fame. Yes, he did. It's awesome. <laughs> um, we're actually having him in um, 
for our third annual camp with him for the preseason. Um, at the end of October, we bring Coach Duck in. So we're excited to have him back. I think it's like October 21st through the 23rd. He's going to be up here. Um, well, I, yeah, right. I saw some of that. I saw you you shared some stuff on my group. Yeah, so we're so on Facebook. Yeah, He's I was going to say, when is Duck coming up? Because I know I've seen him the last couple of years up there at your place. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he brings numbers, right? When when you say Duck is going to be there, he loves the kids. He, he spoke about it this weekend and uh, well-deserved to him. So congratulations to Coach Duck. Absolutely. Uh, any uh, Anything else going on? Or are you guys going to Michigan? Um, we might have a few kids go up there. Um, we're definitely trying to get the uh, – for the Charlotte Soap Duels, trying to get some youth teams in there. Um and we just got back from Georgia this week, and we went up to Coach Cars and brought two youth teams up there, a 9U and a 12U team, and brought about 20 kids up there for that. Um, I'd like to get some more kids up to Michigan, um, obviously, especially trying to get Billy up there. Um, so is, you can... um, I know Daniel and Zachary are going. Um, talk to Daniel on Sunday. See. Absolutely. I will. Yeah, that would be awesome up to that because i know he i know he's going um and uh yeah i'm sure i, I think he's going with they're going with lake gibson okay because um, um his club is going to journeyman so i asked him do you want to do journeyman or grappler because the same weekend he they wanted to do grappler so uh i reached out to walker because he's bringing a team so i'm i'm sure if you reached out to walker i'm sure he'd bring billy too okay uh, that's my reach. Yeah, so uh, that'd be cool. Hey, the, the more the merrier, right? Absolutely, especially with those guys. That group's a, a great group of kids to even just train with for that. So, yeah, just to get an opportunity to, to roll with some different kids would be good. Um, and then what do we? Oh, we got thirty-two qualifier coming up, right? You guys going to be over there? Yeah, we've got. Um, Adrian and Billy Day are both going, and then um, a few of our other high schoolers are registered. Um, so we'll, I'll definitely be out there for that. Um, Mason Medina from Bishop Moore is going to be out there. He registered, so that'll oh, be awesome. Yeah. I, I haven't looked at, like, registrations, or I haven't looked at, at any of that. I know Daniel's going. Um, I think he says he's going to go 145. So. And Billy's going to be in there at 38 again. Good. That'd be good. I because Billy's big. And, and, yeah, Daniel's been – well, you'll see him. He's been trying to work out and get bigger, but he's on a weight cut. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So, uh, man, that's awesome. Well, man, you're doing big things out there on the coast. And it seems like um, you guys all communicate pretty much. Like, I always see Space Coast doing stuff and and uh, uh, Merritt Island doing stuff and you guys doing stuff. And you guys are all involved in the AAU stuff out there. And, and it seems like your kids are, are all going around and getting some – it seems like the youth, the little kids out there are really, there's a lot. It, it seems like wrestling is really growing out there. Um, and girls, how do the girls look? Um, pretty good. I think, you know, we're, we're still trying to grow that in this county. I think um, this year is going to go a long way. Hopefully I, I've got, we didn't have any come out last year. I think we're up to six that are coming out this year. Um, I think that's the one, the only thing really this county has so far started to lack is just the girls in the county. Um, I'd like to see Brevard County offer, um, you know, actual stipends to coaches so we can get coaches on staff because um, they still – Brevard County still hasn't offered stipends for the girls wrestling. Um, I think all the coaches out here in Brevard County would like to see that because it makes it easier because now you can get other assistants on staff that can, you know, dedicate solely to a girls team too um you know all under one roof but kind of you know be able to have people that are 100 percent committed to just the girls um and then you have other assistants that are dedicated to just the boys and you can keep things rolling and make sure that the girls get the coaching that they deserve you know and and not you know not just you know part-time coaches from you know guys that are part-time coaching the boys part-time coaching the girls they think they fully deserve to have paid coaches on staff that only have to focus on them. I think that's that's what this county really needs. And then I think the girls would explode out here. Yeah, and it seems like they're starting. We can feel the bubble. And, and 
mean, we only had 34 girls at Fargo and we came in fifth and you're competing with teams of 50, 60, 70. I, I went to ask you, coming from Illinois, uh, you know, I was talking to Bibi and he said that the reason Illinois has been so good at Fargo and has had so much success at Fargo over the years is they have the largest freestyle state tournament in the country behind Fargo. Um, coming up in Illinois, uh, would you agree with that? I mean, is that something that they push fiercely and how important is it to that state and how can we get, get that importance drilled into our state to, to get these kids on, onto the freestyle season and get them to all participate to get all of our best out to far? Because I really believe we had, the, I, I bet you we had a half a dozen kids that, that may have all American that weren't there. Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously, you know, BB's 100% right on that. The Illinois Freestyle State Tournament is completely insane. I mean, my dad just this year, he has a, a three-time Illinois State champ who's going for his fourth this year as a senior, and he didn't he didn't even place at the Freestyle State Tournament. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just an insane – it's an insane tournament. The numbers that show up in the brackets are just incredible. It seems like, you know, everybody's wrestling freestyle in Greco and Illinois in the summer. If you want to be successful, you're doing it. And I think that down here, all we're missing is just more coaches coming on board, seeing the importance of freestyle and Greco. Um, I think, you know, you have to convince the coaches first. And once you convince the coaches, it, it becomes a little easier. Um, I think with the coaching staff that was put together for Fargo this year, um, I think that's going to help a lot because, I mean, the coaches that are there, everyone's going to look at their, their high school programs and see – you know what they're doing as far as folk style is concerned and then what's their secret right they're wrestling all year long and all their kids are competing in fargo you know, it's, it's not a secret um you want to have a really high successful you know high school team your kids are going to be wrestling in the off season and they're going to be doing the freestyle in greco so i think once everybody sees that hopefully you know we can get our numbers up and florida's got the talent i mean it's just about getting them to do it in the off season yeah, for sure. And listen, we brought a lot of kids. I mean, I think we had 80, 74 or 84 boys. Um, but I just feel as big as our state, like I've, I've spoken to kids, you know, I understand the, the kids that are, have already, uh, they've got college commitments and, and the, and they're already off to college and they already graduated their senior year. I get that. Right. Um, right. But I think we had a lot of sophomores and juniors that were, were tremendous and probably could have competed and we still did amazing based on what we have but yeah the real opportunities on the girls side there's no question in this state that um and i think mason and the crew know it that we could we could easily flip in one year from 35 to 50 girls 60 girls i mean there's so many good girls in our state right now and and i think a lot of them do transition to the jujitsu season when when they get through that state tournament. So you see a lot of them getting on the square mat as opposed to the round mat. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm hoping the success they saw with um, with somebody like Sophia, who was a jujitsu girl and was able to get out there and do what she did, um, will, will kind of attract more women to say, hey man, I'm gonna go. Cause uh, the numbers, I mean, look at California. They're doing a fantastic job. They brought, I don't know, 70 girls, something, 80 girls, and they killed it. Um, and they're not bringing bums, right? They're bringing girls that can compete. Right. I think that uh, with us, the biggest thing is if we want to bump those girls' numbers up, it's just, you know, showing them that that's your opportunity for college, right? Well, women wrestle freestyle in college, and, um, you know, if you're going to jujitsu after wrestling season – you're not going to get a college scholarship with jujitsu, right? I mean, you can do things, and uh, obviously I'm not knocking jujitsu. It's awesome. But um, if their dream is to wrestle in college, well, freestyles would be wrestling. So uh, it, there's so well, many opportunities. Of opportunity, up, right? like, which, I love the jujitsu, and I'm starting to, to be into that community, and they do great things. But it's only an eight-day an eight, an eight day ask, right? Right. Um, and, I mean, it's – with, with – uh, with the women's programs, just the way they're exploding in college, I mean, there's so many opportunities for these girls out of, out of Florida to get scholarships because there's so many talented girls. So I think get, just getting them to Fargo, 
they're going to get so many looks. They're going to get so many colleges knocking on their doors, you know, offering them scholarships. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, that, yeah, that I had Sophia on here, but I was there. She she wrestled both. I think it was cadet and junior, and then jumped on a plane and flew to Orlando and competed at the Orlando Open for Jiu Jitsu. Wow! So it can be done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. it can be done. You got to be special, but it can be done. Uh, oh, it's cool, man. I'm glad that we finally got a chance to kind of. Um, do this and talk about it. I'm sure we'll see plenty of each other. Uh, yeah. This, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the boys do um, through the season and hoping to see both of them on the top of the podium, you know, hopefully Billy at 38 and Daniel at 45. And that would be something special. I, I would, that, that would really be heartwarming because from where they came from to where they're going, it'd be super cool. Yeah, it would be amazing. Hopefully, I mean, the fact that they're training together only helps their chances. So, yeah, it's gonna I, know be a there's, there's a, with I know there's a 38 right down the road from you that would probably say, "Wait a second, I want I want to get on top of that podium too." <laughs> but yeah, a few of them in the air, uh, 38 and 45 probably that that are right down the road that want to be on top. But yeah, hopefully those two yeah. work together and make it happen. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. Well, man, I'll let you get back to your boys and girls. And uh, I really appreciate you doing this with me. And uh, uh, Mia, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure my boy will see you this weekend. I'll do it again sometime. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. Just hit me up. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. All right, buddy.